Down smash, gets two hits. Man, Ladies that's gonna be it. That was the quickest grand final Probably. I have seen. Shout out to Armada, making it look easy. Names come and go in a franchise as enduring as Smash Bros. Players retire from the game, move on with their lives, and inevitably, entire careers are simply lost to time. It's incredible then that a select few have managed to stick with the scene through nearly six different iterations of Smash, spanning from the N64 original to Ultimate. Rarer still that a player achieves greatness in each game they play and maintains top player status throughout their competitive careers. There's no doubt that you've felt the way players like this have impacted the history of Smash Bros. From the gods of Melee setting the foundation for one of the most explosive spectator sports on the planet, to the new gods of Ultimate making history at every tournament they attend. But what's a god to a... Larry. No doubt if you've been on Twitter in the last few weeks, you've seen this iconic image of Larry Lur. But who exactly is Larry? And why is he, of all people, the Smash player you're most likely to see on Twitter these days? Lucky for you, we have the answers. Larry Lur has been a top-level Smash player for longer than many of Ultimate's rising stars have been alive. Some of his earliest recorded tournaments date back to 2006 playing Melee and SoCal at events like Zero Challenge 3 and Super Champ Combo. Growing up in one of Smash's historically strongest regions, he constantly faced some of the best competitors in series history, including Mango and Lucky. Ironic then that with a tag of DEHF standing for Does Everybody Hate Falco? that Falco himself was their character of choice. And though he may not have realized it as a 16-year-old in the MLG era, Larry would consistently bring out the best of the bird for almost 15 years. Although Larry was a great melee player in his own right, placing top eight at SoCal's weekly tournaments, he wasn't a household name within competitive Smash just yet. Two thousand eight marked Brawl's release and the true beginning of Larry Lur's rise to the top. He quickly cemented himself as his region's best, placing second at the aptly named first ever Brawl tournament, playing on the Japanese version of the game, which came out a few months ahead of the American version. But this would only be the beginning of Larry Lur's competitive Brawl career, and he would go on to become one of the greatest Falco mains in the game's history. His breakout performance came at SCSA West Coast Circuit No. 1, where he won the tournament over SK92 and Nanners, as well as Melee Legends Fiction and Fly Amanita. Though the competitive brawl scene held major tournaments far and few between, this wouldn't stop Larry from placing top 8 at nearly every single one from 2008 to 2010. This included a first place major finish at Apex 2010, where he faced the Japanese Olimar player Brood in Grand Finals, and where he picked up wins over Mewtwo King, Atomisk, and Sweet Pea on the way. How does it feel to be the championship winner of the first international tournament that we've ever held for Brawl? It feels amazing. While Apex 2010 was undoubtedly the peak of Larry's brawl career, he also racked up top 8 appearances at storied majors, including placing 6th at Genesis Brawl and 7th at EVO 2009. Competitive brawl would begin to fizzle out following Apex 2010, with only one major a year on average taking place until the release of Smash 4 in 2014. As such, there weren't as many opportunities for the world to see peak Lur. Though the best of his brawl days may have been behind him, Larry's impact on the competitive brawl scene cannot be overstated. For example, he was ranked top 10 in the retro SSBB rank for three consecutive years, capping out at 5th in the world in 2008, his first year ranked. Larry would continue to stay active within the scene by entering melee tournaments to bide his time between Smash 4's announcement at E3 2012 and the 3DS version's release in the summer of 2014. Fun PG fact, mirroring his top placement at the first ever Brawl tournament, Larry took first place at the first ever Smash for 3DS tournament. At San Diego Comic Con 2014, just one month after E3, Nintendo hosted an official tournament at the convention where rounds would progress from free-for-all four-player matches to one-on-one -on -one battles. Obviously not your standard format, but who could turn up the chance to be able to play the new game early? Countering with his forward tilt. Ooh, but Larry taking that stop oh, from the wow. back there. And he's doing the, uh, that's a really common Falco taunt in Melee, 
which is crouch, crouch, crouch. Legend has it that Larry finished first with Bowser, who was widely believed to be one of the best characters in the game heading into its September launch. Falling apart. We're but not nobody believes in him. Oh, oh but that's back as well. He's gonna be in. He's made it back. That is your grand final letter. So, okay, just real quick. Dude, Larry. Larry. How do you feel? Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that's it? Yeah. With the release of Smash Wii U came a much more recorded history of Larry Lair's competitive career, as the scene began to rapidly expand alongside the boom of esports in the mid 2010s. Larry remained one of the best players in the world throughout the duration of Smash 4's lifespan, swapping Bird for Mammal as he opted to use the much stronger Fox in this iteration of the game. Larry's Smash 4 career was filled to the brim with first place finishes at PGR S and A tier tournaments, including two GGT Mexico Saga, DreamHack Montreal 2017, KawaiiCon 2018, and DreamHack Montreal 2018. He was ranked top 10 in nearly every PGR iteration, with a small decline to 16th in the 5th and final iteration of the rankings. To cap things off, he was cemented as the 8th greatest Smash 4 player of all time in the PGR Top 100, closing another incredible chapter for his career. Larry Lair's journey through competitive Smash is defined by his enduring legacy as a top player throughout multiple iterations of the series. Beginning when he was just a teenager, he followed a generation's defining path to top playerhood and will continue to be remembered as a champion of space animals forevermore. Because even though Esam is giving him stage, uh -oh, oh, that's, that's set. it! That's set! That Larry Lur it. in the 15th game will take it over Esam and win DreamHack Austin 2018. That's nice and all, but why didn't you give any mention to Ultimate? Well, we've already established his legacy, and Ultimate results don't hold a candle to his top player status in two consecutive Smash iterations. I don't think there's a more compelling story to tell. Uh, you got it all wrong. This is a legend still in the making. The Larry lore still has more to explore, and he's only just recently become a niche internet icon. Who cares about all that old stuff? All right then, why don't you just take it from here and explain to the viewers how he could possibly still be making history. With pleasure. From a bird's eye view, Larry Lur's ultimate career thus far hasn't quite reached the same peaks of the two previous iterations of Smash. Thus far, he's yet to be ranked on a PGRU season, and in his home region of SoCal, he topped out with a number two ranking during the fall 2019 season, ranking just below that in every other season. Additionally, he's yet to place first in an offline event with at least 400 entrants. His best first place finish, based on entrants, was the 2GG National Arcadian in February 2020 with 324 players, a tournament where PGRU ranked players were barred from entry. If history has taught us one thing, however, Larry's peak could still be ahead. Let's break it down from the beginning. Larry's competitive ultimate career started off strong with a first place finish at MSM 170, where he made an unbelievable 13 game losers run after being sent to the bottom bracket by Exmo 3 in winner's round three. Notably, on the way there, he upset Void, sending him packing at ninth place and closing the tournament out with a 6-1 grand finals victory over I'm Hip. Larry would continue to clean shop in region, taking first at numerous MSM and True Combo Thursday weekly tournaments. His major performances were another discussion entirely, as Larry would hit an early high of 17th place at Genesis 6 and 2GG Prime Saga. It would take another 5 S and A ranked events before he would beat that placement, as he finished 9th at 2GG Switch Fest 2019. It would take another year and a global pandemic until he met his ninth place finish at an event again. At Ultimate Wanted number three, Larry ventured to Europe for his first major in-person tournament appearance since Genesis 7. There, he placed ninth, taking sets off PGRU EU contenders list players Siski and Leon. So that's it then? Sure, there are some good, even great results in here, but nothing compares to his Brawl and Smash 4 days. What else is there to tell? Yeah, I was just getting there. After the hiatus away from offline tournaments, a light of hope began to shine at a tournament you may not have expected. Immediately following Spargo's historic win at Smash Ultimate Summit 4, G4TV hosted an in-person invitational tournament, also held in LA. Among them, 
was none other than the protagonist of this story, Larry Lur. The copy pastas were in full force, and so was Larry. Not only did he claim a 2 0 win over Chag, but he double eliminated MK Leo in order to claim second place in the tournament. Just so we're clear here, the G4 Smash Invitational doesn't really count for anything in the terms of rankings and could be dismissed as an exhibition tournament. But with $25,000 on the line, what reason would you have to not try your best? Oh, I that is it! Insane. MK Leo played five of his seven games versus Larry as Corrin, a character he's yet to showcase at an open major, but has been practicing with on Wi Fi. You could argue this wasn't peak Leo, but if that were the case, he could have just switched to Byleth or Joker multiple times throughout both sets. Wins over MK Leo speak for themselves, regardless of circumstance, and the fires of Larry Nation remain bright as ever. If there was any indication that Larry Lur's long history of top player status is far from over, it was this. That's all well and good, but it was still just an invitational, wasn't it? True, but then isn't Summit just an invitational too? The past is the past, and we're witnessing a new peak for Larry. Your argument still doesn't compare to the countless top level results he attained in- I believe you're both wrong. Let me propose an alternative theory. It's time to tell you all the truth. You've been lied to and tricked by one single man. First of all, his last name isn't even Lur. His birth name is Larry Holland. But you've all been brainwashed into calling him by the moniker Larry Lur. Why? I believe it's all been part of his plan from the very beginning. I can only prove events starting as early as five years ago, but my sources lead me to believe that it's been going on much, much longer. What happened five years ago, you may ask? The picture. You know the one. Larry in his kitchen wearing his signature Mega Man shirt coupled with the incandescent red shorts. What was Larry doing in the kitchen? Cooking up a plan. What are you talking about? Shush. I'm not done yet. Anyways, he planted the seeds of his plan with a single tweet all those years ago, waiting patiently for them to blossom into a garden of lies. In the present day, thanks to that one single image, Larry's influence has spread farther than anyone could have ever imagined with the newest phenomenon of Larry posting. This conspiracy goes deeper, though. Larry Lur has even managed to rope the CEO of Funky Fresh Beats Hideki Naganuma into his plot. This can clearly be seen with the latest wave of Larry posting being ignited by a tweet posted by Naganuma, vastly expanding the sphere of influence influence enjoyed by Mr. Holland. His conquest will continue until no corner of the internet is safe. Look at what you're watching right now. Larry Lur has even managed to invade the PG Stats YouTube channel. Wake up. You're not safe from the Larry Mageddon. What are you talking about? You guys are completely wrong. It's because I'm Larry.